the word of the Lord. Our first reading for the second Sunday of Advent is taken from the prophet Isaiah. I would like to reflect with you on conversion, change of mind, of heart, and even the change in society that the coming of the Lord Jesus will bring about. And it is also part of the preparation for welcoming Him the call to conversion. The first reading from the prophet Isaiah presents to us this vision of a sprout from the stump of Jesse, from the line of David. And this sprout will bring about change, will bring about a radical change in people's lives and even in society. This change, this conversion, is depicted to us in the first reading through images. First of all, this king who will come is not your ordinary ruler. He is a changed type of ruler. What we will say, for a change, we will get a new king. He is filled with the Spirit of God and therefore, will not only be wise, but will judge in favor of the poor. He will use the justice of God as the norm for changing society, for restoring society according to the will of God. What a change! For a change! A leader who will be filled not with ambition, not with the desire to possess brute power, but filled with the Spirit of the Lord. The coming of this stump or a sprout of Jesse will inaugurate a new humanity, a new city, a polis, a family that is also changed or converted. The beautiful images made immortal by Isaiah are given to us. The wolf shall be a guest of the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child to guide them. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors together their young shall rest. The lion shall eat hay like the ox. The baby shall play by the cobra's den. Images of peace, of reconciliation, of enemies now getting together, caring for one another, and even caring for each other's young, meaning they are all now working together for the good of the next generation. What a change! What a conversion this shoot from Jesse would bring about. My dear brothers and sisters, are we not all enamored of this vision of a changed humanity, of a world converted to the Spirit of the Lord? Don't we all feel the need for everyone, whole societies, indeed the whole of creation, to change, to be converted to visions of selfless justice, to visions of peace and reconciliation. The promise of Advent is this. God, through Jesus, will convert, will change the world into a place of peace, and justice. The question is, will we welcome the conversion and change that Jesus will offer? There is no problem with Him. He comes to change the world in what we call salvation. But will we allow Him to change us? So the question is, how ready are we to be converted to Jesus 
and the vision of salvation that His Father wants to offer to us. I hope we will be able to answer in the affirmative, saying, I welcome conversion. The Word of the Lord Our second reading on this second Sunday of Advent is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. We have been reflecting on conversion, change, which is a gift of Jesus who comes to us, yet also is a calling. Will we be able to welcome Jesus? Will we be able to receive His gift of change? by allowing change to happen to us. So conversion or change of heart, even the change of society, is not just a gift from Jesus, but it is also a responsibility that we have to assume if we want to welcome Jesus. In the second reading, St. Paul tells us that the vision of a changed humanity very similar to that of the first reading, really comes with Jesus, where we will treat each other as brothers and sisters, not anymore driven by anger or hatred or the desire to be divided among ourselves. In Jesus, St. Paul claims, a new family will come. But we know from experience that having this changed humanity is not easy. Biases, prejudices, memories of hurts and pain, they linger and they are passed on from generation to generation. And so many people give up. They say it is useless working for change. It is of an exercise in futility to labor hard for a changed humanity and for a converted human person. They give up. St. Paul gives us a good reminder in the second reading. He tells us that patience and encouragement come from God. The source of patience and encouragement is God himself. And this is not just a slogan as far as St. Paul is concerned. We can even verify it in our lives, the way St. Paul can say this is true in his own life's journey. How are we able to effect change in ourselves? First, through God's help. Thanks to God who is patient, thanks to God who encourages us, we can continue changing and being converted. The patience of God gives us the space to pursue conversion and change. The encouragement that God gives us is the source of hope for people and communities who want to really see change. This is an Advent attitude. Patience, encouragement, no change within ourselves and in the wider society can happen without a lot of patience. Let us imitate God who is patient with us all the time as though waiting for us to respond to His calling for renewal, change, and conversion. But let us also encourage one another the way God encourages us in Christ when we see people who are serious about radical change or conversion in their lives like God, like Jesus, let us support them. Let us not make fun of them. Let us not discourage them. Let us not tell them, oh, you will change only for a day and tomorrow, oh, you will be back to business as usual. No, we want to be the vehicles of God 
who patiently encourages people on the path of real conversion. During this Advent season, let us pray to God to give us patience with ourselves and to give us the courage to pursue a life of change. Our Gospel for this Sunday, the second Sunday of Advent, is taken from St. Matthew. We have been reflecting on conversion, change not only of individuals but also of societies, both as a gift of God who comes to us in Jesus and also our responsibility if we want to welcome Jesus who brings about conversion and change. In the first reading from Isaiah, we see a vision of a new ruler, wow, for a change, filled with the spirit of justice, love of the poor, and who will inaugurate for us a society of reconciliation and of peace. What a change. This king will give us, will offer to us a new life. But will we welcome the change that he offers to us, beginning with ourselves? And will we work with him towards a changed and converted society? In the second reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, we see again a vision of a changed family where people will treat each other as brothers and sisters, where Jews and Gentiles will all give glory to God and not live in division, in mutual hatred. But how do we effect that change? According to St. Paul, we need a lot of patience and encouragement from God. Again, God offers us the needed ingredients for change, patience, encouragement. But we should not only receive it from God, we should give that to others as we treat others who are serious about conversion, let us be patient with them and let us encourage them. In the Gospel, the figure of John the Baptist, the one chosen by God to be the voice in the wilderness. What is this voice crying out in order to prepare the people for the coming of the Messiah, the promised King, as foreseen in the first reading by Isaiah. His message, reform your lives, repent, change, be converted. Then we say, okay, but what type of change? What type of reform? It is contained in the second sentence or proclamation of St. John, which is, the kingdom of God is at hand. The new kingdom that will usher in a new humanity and a new history and a new society, this kingdom is at hand and it will bring about reform and change. So those who want to change must abide by the dictates the values of the kingdom of God. These come together, reforming our lives and the coming kingdom of God. We know that the reign of God that comes is in the person of Jesus. He is the kingdom. He is the personification of the kingdom of God that will usher in reform and change. And to welcome Him, we need to change our lives. St. John had to deal with people, including Pharisees, scribes, who are supposed or were supposed to be experts in the kingdom of God, the reform that the kingdom of God promised, and also personal conversion and reform. After all, the Pharisees and the scribes were 
experts and teachers. So, if there is any group of people during the time of John the Baptist who could point the way to real conversion and change in the light of the reign of God, you turn, no? It is the group of the Pharisees and the scribes. But St. John had some harsh words to them in the area of genuine conversion and change in the light of the kingdom of God. We can learn from their mistakes and their weaknesses. We can also learn from the words of St. John. How can we remove the barriers to genuine conversion as we welcome Jesus who brings in His person the reign of God? Two reminders from St. John the Baptist. The first is the Pharisees and the scribes came to John the Baptist for baptism. They wanted to join the people who lined up in order to receive baptism from John the Baptist in the Jordan, which was a baptism for the forgiveness of sins. A baptism that ritualizes or puts into a some, some sort of ceremony or rite or ritual conversion, change. But John the Baptist saw through them, he calls them a brood of vipers. Wow, harsh words. Why? Because he knew that the scribes and Pharisees were bent on observing ritual performances without taking seriously the interior conversion that the rite or ritual must effect. So, St. John the Baptist saw in the scribes and Pharisees a divorce, a separation between external ritual practice and interior conversion. And St. John the Baptist is not impressed by an exterior performance of a ritual of conversion. He needs to see how the heart is really changed. So my dear brothers and sisters, conversion is not a matter of exterior change. What is needed is the source of real change, the heart that is converted to the kingdom of God. The second thing that St. John the Baptist uh, accuses the scribes and Pharisees of is the label. The label, oh, we are children of Abraham. So why are you castigating us? No, we th thrive on labels. No? And St. John the Baptist says, please, don't use those labels. Don't claim, I am close to this person. I am close to that. You know, don't even say, oh, if you read, read the marker in our parish, I am listed there as one of the donors, etc. No, I am close to Monsignor. I am a great benefactor of this and that school or that institution. St. John the Baptist says, I don't care about those labels. I want evidence in your life that you really belong to the reign of God. I think that is clear. What St. John the Baptist is looking for is this. Basically, obedience to God. Show in your lives that you are docile, that you listen to God and you implement His Word in your life. That is change. That is conversion. While rituals are important, they are not the real measure of our conversion to the kingdom of God and to Jesus. While connections and labels may help in worldly affairs, but when it comes to the affairs of the kingdom of God and welcoming Jesus, that does not matter. Fundamentally, a person who obeys the Lord 
and who adjust his life according to the values of Jesus' kingdom, that is the person who has really understood what change conversion means. Last 28th of November, I had the opportunity to go to Leyte, Tacloban and Palo. It was the closing of their 75th anniversary as a diocese, planned long ago. And they had invited me months ago to uh, preside at the closing ceremonies. Then Yolanda struck. But they decided we would come. We would all come. And you please come, Cardinal. We will celebrate the Jubilee. And what I saw really uh, shocked me. Uh, it's different if you're there. Seeing the images on TV and the newspapers already uh, uh, left me uh, speechless and shocked. But being there, you know, uh, really uh, uh, brings you to, uh, to this uh, state of, uh, of, uh, of mystery that your mind, your heart cannot fathom. But I was encouraged by a simple parish worker who approached me and uh, in the moment of, uh, of exchange, she said, maybe this is the most pure and genuine Christmas that I will experience. Where all the trappings, all the exterior uh, decorations and activities that we associate with the coming of Christ are taken away from us. The only thing that matters now is Jesus will come and we believe in Him even if the cathedral has lost its roof, even if there's no electricity, even if our parish churches are not as, as uh, prepared as they were for the past Christmases, we have what really matters, the faith to turn to Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, that is conversion, that is change. But please let us not wait for calamities to happen, to hear the call of real change. And I want to thank the suffering survivors in Leyte, in Cebu, in Iloilo, in Masbate, in Bohol, in Aklan, in Capiz, in Palawan, even in Zamboanga. Their conversion experience teaches all of us what real change is all about as we welcome the Messiah. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it.